Hey everybody, <clears throat> back again. Hopefully I can keep this one quick. This is a little more uh, in-depth on access point to more land and dealing with Antarctica as the access point. Now I mentioned before that I feel there are underwater or under glacial geothermal melted waterways that could be traversed with submarines and I think Hitler and the Nazis, Admiral Byrd, America, found out about this back in the 50s. So when you look into what really is going on down at Antarctica with geothermal and underglacial situations, I don't know how many people are familiar with Lake Vostok. Again, do your own research. V-O-S-T-O-K. Now read from Wikipedia about Lake Vostok. This is an example of what's going on down there. I guess I got to put glasses on for this. My eyes are getting bad. How about that? Oh, yeah. Tubal came with glasses. Good stuff. Lake Vostok is the largest of Antarctica's almost 400 known subglacial lakes. Lake Vostok is located at the southern pole of cold beneath Russia's Vostok Station. Under the surface of the central East Antarctica ice sheet, which is at 3,400 miles above mean sea level, the surface of this freshwater lake is approximately 13,000 feet under the surface of the ice, which places it at approximately about 1,600 feet below sea level. Measuring 160 miles long by 30 miles wide, it at its widest point and covering an area of 4,800 square miles and an average depth of 1,400 feet. It has an estimated volume of 1,300 cubic miles. The lake is divided into two deep basins by a ridge. The liquid water over the ridge is about 700 feet compared to roughly 1,300 feet deep in the northern basin and 2,600 feet deep in the southern. All right, the lake, the lake is named after Vostok Station, which is turned is named after Vostok, a sloop of war ship, which means east in Russian. The existence of a subglacial lake in the Vostok region was first suggested by Russian geographer Andrei Kapista based on seismic soundings made during the Soviet Antarctic expedition in 59 and 64 to measure the thickness of the ice sheet. The continued research by Russian and British scientists led by 1993 to the final confirmation of the existence of the lake by J.P. Ridley using ERS laser altimetry. So this is just one of the subglacial lakes, fresh water, that is two miles under the ice shelf. The warmth, the heat from the land, the earth that is underneath the glaciers, melts away the ice. But yet it doesn't melt it all the way up to the top of these glaciers. glaciers. So you have this deposit of large fresh water because only fresh water freezes, salt water doesn't. So the glaciers are fresh water being heated from underneath. They melt and create a giant freshwater lake that is literally underneath ice. They had to drill through the ice to get to Lake Vostok. So here's a little more about Lake Vostok. The overlying ice provides a continuous paleoclimatic record of 400,000 years although the lake water itself may have been isolated for 15 to 25 million years. On February 5th, 2012, a team of Russian scientists completed the longest ever ice core of 12,400 feet and pierced the ice shield to the surface of the lake. So this is from RT News. Scientists have discovered more than 3,500 unique gene sequences in Lake Vostok. The underground Antarctic water reservoir isolated from the outside world for 15 million years. 
revealing a complex ecosystem far beyond anything they could have expected. The bounds on which the bounds on what is habitable and what is not are changing, said Scott Rogers, Bowling Green State University, professor of biological science. All right, we found much more complexity than anyone thought. It really shows the tenacity of life and how organisms can survive in places where a couple dozen years ago we thought nothing could survive. So again, shows you how little these scientists really know about our environment. In the decades since the discovery of active Antarctic subglacial water systems, by detection of subtle surface displacements, much progress has been made in our understanding of these dynamic systems. Here we present some of the key results of observations derived from ice sat laser altimetry, cryosat two radar altimetry, Operation Ice Bridge airborne laser altimetry. So Operation Ice Bridge, they use GPS, different ground-based continuous GPS experiments deployed in hydrologically active regions. These observations provide us with an increased understanding of various lake systems in Antarctica. It's just not a sheet of ice. Willens Mercer ice streams, Crane Glacial Recovery ice stream, Bird Glacier and eastern Wilkes Land, in several cases, subglacial water systems are shown to control ice flux through the glacier systems. For some of the lake systems, we've been able to construct more than a decade of continuous lake activity. So that is an area of science, subglacial waterways. Lake Vostok, which is known to exist under the ice, a big freshwater lake. So there's known subglacial waterways. Wouldn't be that difficult for a submarine or multiple submarines to traverse underneath the ice apparently, and who knows where it leads to. Could that take us to another little pond like ours where there's geothermal melted ice that has created the water, the seas, and that's where the landmass came up from underneath of the melting. Again, it's a theory because none of us know. None of us know if there is more land outside of here. You know, Mark Sargent likes to use the Truman Show and makes it seem like you're looking up at a planetarium. How about a terrarium instead of a planetarium? Meaning, if there are subglacial channels in Antarctica, that could be where the tides are caused of water coming in and out. If there's some type of created system for weather systems, air, heat, and water, as we do for animals when we want to create an environment for a lizard to live in our house, or a snake, or a rodent, or if you would like to grow plants inside, we as humans have created environments to trick vegetation as well as animals to believe that they are in a natural environment. So we are in a natural environment that apparently has been created, which handles water, air, and heat. And if it was created by something much greater than us, and we have yet to still understand the technology to do this, we're just like a, you know, a kept mammal in a terrarium not a planetarium. That's just a theory. Can't prove it unless I get in a submarine and go underneath Antarctica. That's not going to happen. Don't have the money, don't have the time. So a theory is as good as anyone else's. There's proof that there's subglacial aquatic systems. Those can be traversed with submarines. We know New Schwabenland was made down in Antarctica by the Germans and immediately after that with the Antarctic Treaty to make sure nobody can have access to that part of our plane because I don't say it's a globe so it's a coincidence again that Antarctica is shut off 
but yet there was heavy activity in the 50s, especially with submarines and especially with the Nazis. And the Nazis come from the Jesuits and on and on and on if you want to know part of the control factor. Again, theories. I think Antarctica is a key. I think there's subglacial water systems that are obtainable with the proper equipment. And that's the only way out as far as I know of physically because, again, we haven't been to the moon. We can't get out above. So that's what I got. I'm open for comments on what people think. I'd like people to do some more research into Antarctica, Lake Vostok, and the underwater glacial systems that are happening down there and how much research has been done into them. That's all I got. Flatlines matter. Peace out.